Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning, and welcome to those of you watching online. It is, of course, what day? Pentecost Sunday. It's a day where we celebrate uh, the coming of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the church, and we recognize the Spirit has been at work in our lives and will continue to be at work in our lives. And so, a number of different things uh, going on today. I'm going to introduce a video in just a second, but uh, if there are some kids gathered here this morning that want to participate in the opening, you can go see Miss Greta back there. I'm not seeing any at the... Oh, there's a few of you. Yeah, head on back and uh, get ready for our processional. Um, also, a reminder today to go ahead and uh, vote. Vote of affirmation for vision board representatives. If you haven't seen uh, the list of names, that you can download our bulletin on your phone and read it there. One of them is here this morning, Kim Dressel. So if you have any questions about Kim, you can talk to her right after the service today. Um, but no, great, great people that uh, we hope you will uh, submit a vote of affirmation for. And then uh, after this video, just uh, prepare yourself, uh, silence yourself, and put yourself in this space because there's going to be a very special opening. And what I want to introduce now is some of you uh, know John and Loretta Wolf. Uh, they've been members of this congregation since all the way back at the sanctuary, uh, our, our former space before we moved here. And they just celebrated their, get ready for this, imagine this, 72nd year of marriage. Yeah, 72nd year of marriage. <laughs> And so if you get to 72 years of marriage, we interview you. Um, and so check this out. So tell me about the uh, ups and downs of 72 years of marriage. Mm. What are the joys and what have been the challenges? Well, one of the challenges that I thought was a challenge to me the day we bought this, I got laid off from work. The house? Yeah. <laughs> Talk about timing. <laughs> it all worked out. Oh, well, that was a layoff. You know, we got called back at that time, but it was the, the, the plant, you know. Yeah. yeah, and he didn't tell me till after we signed the papers, of course. <laughs> <laughs> wow, way to kick off the marriage, right? huh? Yeah. <laughs> How about for you, Loretta? Um, raising three kids is a challenge. Mm. <laughs> and um, just the everyday things with, that happens with families. Yeah. I'm sure we are not the exception. <laughs> <laughs> what have been the biggest joys of being together for 72 years? Well, I think my personal is... This is the children. <clears throat> yeah, raising the children. That was the highs and the lows. Our kids are good to help us. Yeah. We're blessed with the good kids. Yeah. And how many grandchildren do you have? Uh, we have nine grandchildren. Okay. And, what, seven great-grandchildren. Yeah. I think. What, what would be, as they... <clears throat> are in marriages or will enter into marriages, what's a piece of advice that you give to them? If you could give them words of wisdom, what would you say? Patience. Big word, patience. And sometimes you need to wear a big button on your lip. <laughs> <laughs> Hold your tongue. Right. Yep. Yeah. Somebody's always going to be right. You're going to be wrong. So just be patient. And it'll come around. So how has your faith helped your marriage? I pray a lot. Walking around the house, doing dishes, whatever. I'm praying <laughs> for my kids and the world and whatever. Anyway, and as time goes by, and you look back, and you think, how did I, how did we do that? It had to be the Lord's hand. 
you know, but you don't, at the time, you don't really, you don't realize it. The old adage, God works in mysterious ways, is absolutely true. <laughs> and um, as I said before, we're truly blessed, we are. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. As the Spirit enabled them,
Please stand for our call to worship. Come, Holy Spirit, ignite our hearts with joy and confidence, for God has done wondrous things for us. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with the power of the rushing wind, that we may faithfully serve you in all that we do. For Christ has called each of us and blessed us. Come, Holy Spirit, be with us today. Help us to boldly proclaim Christ is risen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For 
this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. ever-living God, you fulfilled the promise of Easter by sending the gift of your Holy Spirit. Look upon your people gathered in prayer, open to receive the Spirit's flame. May it come to rest in our hearts and heal the divisions of word and tongue, that we with one voice and one song may praise your name in joy and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hello, I'm Kelly Cabana-Williams, a member here at Peace, and it is my pleasure to bring you several ways to connect. This week, we had a team of 20 volunteers serving our community at three local schools with the Gahanna Summer Lunch Program. Our team, along with Grin, served 180 hot meals each day. It's Pentecost Sunday, 50 days after Easter, and the celebration of the Holy Spirit coming down to earth. We are celebrating this year by taking the Holy Spirit out into the community with Peace Serves. Thank you to all the volunteers who have signed up to help us today with Peace Serves. After the 10.30 a.m. worship service, all volunteers will be assigned a meeting spot, provided a lunch, and given a t-shirt before working on your project for the day. 
Next Sunday, we will be honoring our 2022 graduates at our new summer worship experience, Peace Unplugged. So join us at 10.30 a.m. for this special acoustic service featuring a lovely indoor-outdoor experience utilizing the garage door in the Connection Center. To support Peace's ongoing outreach ministries, remember these ways to give. You can donate online at peacecahanna.org. You can text PLCG to 73256. You can drop the donation off in the offering basket any Sunday morning, or you can mail in your donation. You can learn more about our community, including upcoming events, groups, and classes at peacecahanna.org, or follow us at Peace Kahana. We are glad you are here today and watching online. We are Peace Lutheran Church. Our mission is to love God, neighbor, and self. Happy Pentecost, everyone. That's right. Everyone knew it was Pentecost today, which is why you're all wearing red, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. In case you're wondering what all the streamers and doves and all that about, it's, it's for Pentecost, right? Because the Holy Spirit that comes down at Acts is described as being like wind, being like fire, being like a dove. And so all those birds, the fire, it was all supposed to be a way to honor the Spirit at work in Pentecost. But Pentecost has a really interesting history because before it was ever a Christian day, it was a Jewish festival. And actually, it was a Jewish festival with a number of different names. And one of the names, the Jewish names, was Pentecost. Penta, which means five, right? Because it was celebrated 50 days after the Passover. That's why it was originally called Pentecost. But there's another name for it. It was also called Shavuot or the festival of weeks, because that 50 days is about seven weeks after the Passover. So it was Pentecost, it was Shavuot, it was the festival of weeks, but it has another name too, because this festival was to celebrate the end of their spring harvest of grain. It was an agricultural festival, so it was known as the festival of the harvest, but that's not the only name. It also was called the festival of the first fruits because during that festival, they would take their first fruits, some of this grain, and they would give, make bread and give the first fruits back to God. So it was the festival of the first fruits. So it was Pentecost, Shavuot, the festival of weeks, the festival of the harvest, the festival of the first fruits. You got all that? Yeah, so if you come to Put Theology on June 8th and you're able to name all five names for Pentecost, Pastor Doug will buy you your drinks that night, I'm sure. <laughs> I haven't confirmed, but he's a good man. I know he'll do it. Yeah, it's confusing, right? And so all of this is going on with this Jewish festival. And like all the major festivals at this time, these Jews would gather from all over and they would come down into Jerusalem. Because at this time, the Jewish people, they all weren't living just in Israel anymore. They were scattered throughout the Roman Empire. And actually, in our reading in Acts, we get a list of all these places that are represented. These are all Jews from these places and cultures. The Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, and on and on and on. And you don't have to know what all these are. The point is, there are all these people with the same faith, but different languages, different cultures from all over the world gathered on this day of Pentecost, like they would every year for the Harvest Festival. Now for us, a festival about the harvest, it seems kind of strange, right? Why would we need a festival for that? Isn't that just a normal thing that happens every year? But especially in the ancient world, they knew this was life or death, right? With the harvest would come. And as people of faith, they needed to mark this occasion because they believe this, and I think we should believe this too, that all those ordinary things in life, things like the sun, Things like soil and rain, the things that we need to make the harvest grow, all of these ordinary parts of life, they're all gifts from God that we should give thanks for. So really, all these Jewish people, before we even get to the Christian meaning, they were there celebrating the Spirit of God at work in the natural world, giving them normal things to sustain their life. So that's what the crowd is there, to celebrate that work of the Spirit. 
But then there's the disciples. And we know this is about 50 days, give or take, after the crucifixion and the resurrection. And so they are all excited because Jesus was raised, but they're all worried because they don't know what's next and they don't know if they're gonna be captured next. And so at this point, they're still hiding. They're waiting in this room together. And here's where we get that text you heard Pastor Doug read. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. It filled the entire house where they were sitting, hiding together. These divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. So as this is going on, the crowd of all these Jews from all these areas, they come over to see what in the world is going on. And incredibly, they all can understand in their own language. And some of them are amazed, but some of them are not. And I love this part of the story. Some of them start to sneer and they say, look at those Galileans. They must be drunk. Like what else could they be doing babbling on and on and things we can't understand? And Peter has the best line to this. Do you remember what it is? Does anyone remember what Peter says? Yeah, it's too early. Like, come on, we're not drunk. It's nine o'clock in the morning. And I love that because Jesus has this reputation, right? He was accused of being a drunk and a glutton. So Peter's like, uh, we do drink. Yes, Jesus taught us how to party, but it's not this early. We're not day drinkers, people. Give us a little credit. We're not drunk at 9 a.m. And so Peter and the others, they start to preach to the crowd and they can all understand it. And not everyone is convinced, but a whole lot of them are. We hear that there are 3,000 people baptized into this early church that one day. And every day afterwards, there are more people being added to their number, coming to see what this movement is all about. And this wasn't just some ecstatic experience that was kind of a flash in the pan and then it was gone. No, the community was changed. We hear at the end of this chapter described how they are transformed in the way they live. All who believed together were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. And they're not told they have to do this. That's just the way the spirit works within them. And day by day, as they spent time, much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home, ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number the, those who were being saved. And so this is amazing, all of this that starts this boom in the early church with Pentecost. But even though I think this is an incredible, great story, I also think we don't really know what to do with it today especially as Lutherans. Now, there are some other churches, the charismatic movement, Pentecostals and others, and, and they kind of have a different idea of what to do with this because they have ecstatic experiences of the spirit in worship. Things like speaking in tongue is a part of their practice of piety. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but we just see it a little differently because what was going on on that day of Pentecost is all these apostles were speaking different languages that someone could understand. They were speaking them so that everyone in the crowd could understand what they were talking about. Now that doesn't mean that the practice of speaking in tongues and worship is bad or that it's not the spirit. It's just different than what was happening on Pentecost. So for us, what do we do with it? Because I think of, we think of this as a cool story. Yes, maybe this happened, but it hasn't happened since, right? We haven't seen the spirit at work like that. It was a one time event and that's it. I think if we see the spirit in that way, like, oh, it did this great thing and then it's done, then we're missing the whole point. Yeah, maybe Pentecost was a particular way the spirit was working, but the whole point of the story is that that same spirit is with us today. It's still all around us. It's filling us up and doing amazing things in this world. We just don't always see them for what they are. Now, part of the reason why I know that Pentecost wasn't a one-time thing is that it's not actually the first time in the Bible where the Holy Spirit does this. I think that a lot of people don't realize this. I know I hadn't come across this story until recently, but there's a very similar story in the book of Numbers where the Spirit is poured out in the time of Moses. So we're gonna take a look at this, but first a little background. So at this point in the story at Numbers, Moses is leading the people of Israel through the wilderness and they're surviving just on manna, the bread from heaven. But the people of Israel are getting really cranky and ticked off. And no joke, they come to Moses and they say, Moses, tell God to give us some meat. 
Like, yeah, all this bread is nice, but we want a good steak. Give us meat. And so Moses comes to God, and God says, okay. You'll be surprised. I'm going to give you meat tomorrow. But Moses pushes back on God. Moses says, look, you don't get it. This crowd is out of control. They're going crazy. I can't calm them down. They're not going to trust me. I need some help. And so here's what God does in Numbers chapter 11. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 of the elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him. And took some of the spirit, the spirit of the Lord that was on Moses, and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they all prophesied. They preached to the crowd, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad. And the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. So they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, book of Joshua, 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 son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men said, my Lord, Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets and the Lord would put his spirit on them. I love this story. So they're at this point in time where Israel is going through this crisis and they need more than just Moses. They need other leaders to help them out. And so God takes the spirit of the Lord and pours that spirit out on these 70 elders, these just normal people, people that no one would remember their name. And they start to lead. They talk to the crowd and the crowds calm down. So these aren't like the best of the best. These are just the people who happen to be there that rise up to the occasion because they see that their community needs them. But the best part of the story is the second half. Because there are two guys who weren't there at the tent, right? They were somewhere else. And so wherever they are, they start to prophesy and lead the crowd where they are. But then Joshua has a problem with it. So remember, Joshua is kind of a big deal. He's the next in line to take over leadership after Moses, the book of the Bible named after Joshua. And Joshua is so threatened by this. He's so worried that there are these random leaders raising up that he tells Moses, stop them, shut those people up. Did you catch what Moses said? Why? Why would I do that? Why are you jealous, Joshua, on behalf of me? I'm the leader here. And I would love more people to step up and lead. The more, the better. Would that all of God's people be prophets. I wish that the spirit of the Lord would rest on everyone. Because that's what they needed in a time of crisis. And there are so many ways that it feels like our world is in crisis right now. And maybe that's always been true, right? Maybe we've always been going through some crisis or another, but it feels like we're definitely in a crisis right now. And I know that most of us, maybe all of us are frustrated with our leaders in general. Like, what are you doing? Can't you do more to fix this, all the things that are going wrong? Maybe the answer or part of it is that God wants more of us to rise up as those leaders. It's like we're waiting on God to fix our problems. Like, God, will you just fix mass shootings already? Will you just fix mental health crisis? Will you just fix, fix racism and on and on and on? But what if God is actually waiting on us to rise up with the spirit that is already here around us and become those leaders that we wish we could see in the world? That's how big changes happen. Now, the other reality about these big changes in the world is that they always start small. I believe this, I, that any big change in the world, it starts small with normal people experiencing things that change their hearts and their minds. So I think of one of those experiences with me was a summer that I was a counselor for Trinity Seminary, uh, their sampler program. So this is when high school students would come in for a week in the summer and they would get to experience what seminary life is and learn from some professors and we would take them around the city from some experiential learning and reflect on those things. But the best part of that week for me was when we took them, these high school Christian students, to a Sikh temple in Hilliard. Now when we got in this temple, we were greeted by this kind older woman who was smiling at us and we told her, told her who we were there to meet and why we were there and it quickly became apparent she had no idea 
what we were saying at all. She spoke no English. And so after some gesturing, we figured out she was asking us to take our shoes off. And so we took our shoes off and put them in this cubby. And then she took out these scarves. And so we put these scarves to cover our head. And we're thinking, okay, now we're going to meet this guy, right? And so she leads us into this other room and, and has us sit down. Okay, he's coming, surely. And we sit down and wait for five, 10, 20 minutes. <laughs> and nothing is happening. And it turns out that our contact had his dates crossed. And he wasn't there. He was out of town that week. So there was no one there who knew what we were doing. And so it's like, okay, you just must be here to worship. And eventually, some other people came for their midweek service. And like three or four people. It was very small. And, and we got to experience what their worship life was like at this Sikh temple. But afterwards, two of the people came over to us. Because clearly, we did not fit in. We didn't know what was happening. And one of them was a truck driver who had never been there before. He was just this Sikh guy who was passing through and stopped to worship on his way to wherever he was going. And then there was this suburban mother of two who was just a normal member of this congregation. But it was amazing what happened as we started to tell her what was going on and why we were there. She lit up and she was like, oh, this is great. I would love to tell you about her faith. And she did. She showed us all around this temple and as best she could, she explained about the history of the Sikh faith and what we were just doing in worship and on and on. And so we thanked her, thank you for saving our evening. But then she said, no, you can't go. You have to eat first. Now I was picturing like pre-packaged cookies, right? Like here's your share, here's your um, Oreo, something like that before you go. But that's not what she had in mind at all, no. So she led us to this room and we sat down next to this open kitchen and we watched as she got out ingredients and started to mix dough. And she, right before our eyes, we started to smell this baking bread and she baked these flatbreads right in front of us and she warmed up soup and dips and tea. And so all of a sudden this just impromptu meal happened. It was one of the best meals I've ever eaten. It was incredible. As we sat and talked together as we ate, they talked about their faith and we talked about ours and then we just talked about life. And it was amazing because of all the differences, the differences in how we dress and talk and worship, we got to see all these things that unite us, that somehow we are all people trying to live out our faith together, even as that faith is different. One of the uh, high school students later said, wouldn't it be great if our churches could welcome people the way that she had welcomed us tonight? I mean, I kid you not, it was the most gracious display of hospitality I've ever experienced. And I have no doubt that the Spirit was at work with us that night. First of all, I know it because we didn't plan it, right? Things did not go according to plan, and yet it was amazing anyway. But part of what I love about that experience is that it wasn't set up by a pastor. It wasn't some religious leader at that Sikh temple that made it happen. It was just this normal woman who decided this is a chance to be an ambassador of my faith and to show love to other people. Now part of what I love about a day like today, what's gonna happen later at Peace Serves, is that we get that same chance to be ambassadors of our faith in our community. Now I know this is not the only day that that happens. There are chances all the time to show people around us what living out our faith looks like, but here's a chance for a lot of us together to go out and show that loving like Jesus includes serving those around us. It's a part of our DNA. And so even things that we're going to do today that may seem mundane, that things like painting and picking up trash and sewing together fidget blankets, all these things, they matter. Because, yeah, we want to change the world in these big ways and solve these crises. But it always starts small. It starts by showing up and serving and loving one another, letting the Spirit of God work in us however that Spirit will work. Because that same Spirit that was there with Moses was there with Jesus, was there at Pentecost, and it is still with us this day. So how will that Spirit come alive in your life?
We continue to pray. God, we thank you for the gift of your spirit, and we pray that that spirit continue to flow among us. May your spirit move among all of our anxieties, as Pastor Tony was talking about, the things that we stress over and that we want changed. It's easy to point out the most recent mass school shooting in Texas, but there seems like there are shootings daily. So move among our anxieties. We're also filled with anxieties over rising prices. Seems like everything costs more. And while some of us are able to navigate that, some of us are really struggling. And so move among us. May your spirit bring relief and a sense of calm. Lord, as this community celebrates Peace Serves Day and your spirit moving among us in service, remind us that it's not a one and done, but that that spirit is always among us as people who serve. And finally, Lord, may your spirit move among this community at peace, moving us as a community forward in the vision that you have in store for us. And may your spirit be with the families who are grieving the loss of loved ones, families of Cheryl Horn, Doris McClurg, and may your spirit of healing be with Betty Buxeeb, Ann Carey, Irv Christensen, Brian Connor, Arvin Stryker, and Emma Schick. God, we thank you for the gift of your spirit that moves in so many different ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's in the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take Eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took a cup, gave thanks, and he poured it out for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's given for you for the forgiveness of sin. When you do this, remember me. And we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. You may be seated. Our table is set and all of you are invited to come and be a part of this meal where Christ is the host. If you're a guest with us, we commune by coming down the center aisle. Come up front, you'll be handed a wafer, which is the body of Christ. Dip it into the cup, the blood of Christ, eating the elements together and returning through the side aisle. If you need gluten-free or pre-filled grape juice, they are available on the center table. There's also a, a offering plate there. If you came prepared to offer uh, back to this community of service, you can do so there. Or if you've given online, we thank you uh, for that in advance. Come.
We have been fed with the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we be people filled with his grace. Amen. God, we offer back to you which you have first given us, these gifts that we have received both in-house and online. We thank you, and may they be used for your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand for our sending hymn.
has come to earth. Let us spread good like fire. The light of Christ is here. Let us take that light into the world. Go in peace. Peace serves.